hi students welcome to lesson number 28 education and social change the relationship of education with social change is not a simple unilateral one as perhaps many would like to believe that it is not only instrumental in bringing about social change it is also quite interestingly instrumental in maintaining the status quo in other words education plays both a conservative and radical role that is it helps both in maintaining and changing different aspects of social system social scientists had diverse positions on the relationships between education and social change there are some who treat education as the most important ideological state apparatus appropriated by the ruling classes to pursue their own ideas and interest they maintain that education is an instrument forged by the ruling classes to serve and preserve their own interests and largely to maintain the status quo in the existing economic and political power structure at the other end there are many social scientists politicians educationists and educational planners who consider education as an important instrument of social change particularly in the context of third world countries here education is treated as affecting economic development and social change the students here will be able to focus on an analysis of education in the context of social change and they will be able to relate education with other social institution from various perspectives US President Lyndon Johnson in 1960 said that the answer to all of our national problem comes down to a single word that is education. Education is more than schooling or being literate. While school is a formal institutional mechanism for imparting formal education, education as an informal process can be ever continuing. It is a social process which enables and promote acquisition of skills and knowledge and the broadening of personal horizons. It can be defined as the process of cultivation of distinct qualities and trained through explicit instructions or through implicit inhibitions as part of growing up amidst family members, kin and peer groups. Francis J Brown remarks that Education is a process which brings about changes in the behavior of society. It is a process which enables every individual to effectively participate in the activities of society and to make positive contribution to the progress of society. In traditional society, educational function was performed by family. But in modern societies, functional alternatives in form of schools, colleges and other institutions have come up. Further earlier, it was mostly linked to religion, but today it is secular in its character and is more inclusive in its approach. The invention of printing press in the year 1423 was a milestone in the history of education. books and print material now became readily available and education itself became broader and open to all it also promoted vernaculars the major consequence of this is a spread of literacy education brings social change by way of affecting existing value system and beliefs it creating capacity among the individuals to develop new ideas as well as opening up new avenues for social mobility it also helps in fostering personal development and self fulfillment it tries to encourage the individuals to develop his or her mental physical emotional and spiritual talents hence education and social change are linked in the following ways the first one education initiates social change that is education is a most powerful instrument of social change because it fulfills the needs of the society and propagates side as which promotes social change in the fields of life it prepares the ground for the advent of social change many great evils like sati and child marriage were banished from the indian society due to education education also has a capacity to welcome change that is it promotes capacity to welcome and accept social change easily and gladly education creates a wholesome and conducive environment for the social changes to become acceptable to all education also gives equality of opportunity 
modern education system and school provides equality of opportunity to the members of society to a great extent regardless of their position in the system of stratification. It helps in creating a more open society and provides greater opportunities of social mobility. And educational capability of member increases their bargaining powers in the markets also increases. Education acts also as a moral agent. Education also play a role in imbibing social values like empathy and racial investigation. It upgrades personal skills and make members more valuable in the society. It broadens personal horizons as well. Children become in their lives what they practice at school and educational institutions. In Aristotle words, we become just by performing just acts, temperate by performing temperate ones, brave by performing brave one. School performs the function of laying the moral foundation in society. Education also plays a role of economics. Education also has a close linkage with economic system. Mass education began only with industrial revolution. It began as a need of economic system. Technical education helped in scaling up the industries which heralded industrial institutions. Education fights orthodoxy, promotes liberal ideas. Education strives to banish social evils, blind customs and tradition through social reform projects. It helps in minimizing discrimination. Schools in modern societies are designed to promote uniformity, standardize aspirations and universalistic values. This is done through uniform textbooks, uniform dress code and a common pedagogy. Education also promotes social mobility. It provides avenues for social mobility. Mass education brings fundamental changes in the social structure. Examples of Jyoti Rabai Phule, Brahma Samaj etc. show how education heralded social change for some of society. It is a force that is even breaking the mold of rigid stratification like caste and providing opportunities in closed societies also. It facilitates both intergenerational and intragenerational mobility. In modern societies, it offers multiple avenues of livelihood and hence offer occupational mobility. Education also evaluates change. Apart from these education also accelerates and stimulates change and later help us in evaluate the social change. Now we will discuss education and its relationship with other social institutions. Education as its relationship with other social institution has been examined from various perspectives. It is with reference to the cultural factors of social change that one talks of education from a conventional perspective. Education mediates and maintains the cultural heritage of the society. But while seeking to conserve, education must also ensure that cultural lag in society is minimized. This means that there must be some attempt to adjust the old culture to new conditions in order that individuals within a society may keep up with technological changes. Patterns of culture and of institution change rapidly even though the average member of society may be virtually unaware of the transformation taking place around her or him. School exists not merely to reflect and mediate the cultural inheritance of society and current change. They exist also to assist in the promotion of social change and reform. One need to look at such countries as Germany, Russia, India and Pakistan and the evolving societies of the continent of Africa and South America to see that education has been and is being used as an agent of social change. A great deal of course depends here upon the nature of the political system of any particular society. Durkheim argued that there was not just one form of education, ideal or actual, but many forms. There were in fact many different forms of education. So society as a whole and each particular context would determine the type of education that was realized or could be realized. 
Durkheim explained that education was crucial in terms of preserving a certain degree of homogeneity and ingraining the essential elements of collective life. He, however, felt that it was also very important to ensure that there was a certain amount of diversity in society, without which any form of cooperation would be impossible. There is and must be an interaction between education and society. It is not just a one-way process in which education is wholly determined by the state or by the demands of society. The institution and structure of education can in turn change and modify the social structure. Society at large may dictate the change through the free election of political parties to power. In turn, the program, form and schedule of education which to a large extent are directed and controlled by the political and social aims of society at any particular time may contribute to the change. A study of comparative education will educate and reveal the fact that the ideologies, the political ideals and the social aims of countries like China, the USA and the Russia, France, Germany and England are reflected in their educational systems. Education, however, does not merely reflect society, it serves to bring change in it too. Karl Mannheim in the year 1960 also explored the problem of social change and social processes in relation to education. He explained that there was a lack of awareness in social affairs as well as a lack of comprehensive sociological orientation. The leaders of the nation including teachers should be educated in a way which would enable them to understand the meaning of change. Manheim argued that in the present situation no teaching was sound unless it trained people to be conscious of the social situation in which they find themselves and to be able after careful deliberation to make their choices and take decisions. Education for some philosophers believe must therefore be for mobility, for flexibility of thought and action, for producing individuals with a high general level of culture so that they can adapt to changing economic and social conditions. According to Kamath, there are four positions regarding education and social change. First, education is for itself and has nothing to do with social change. Second, education is determined completely by social factors and can therefore play no role in changing society. It follows social change. Third, education is an autonomous or relatively autonomous factor and therefore can and does induce social change. Fourth, educational change and social change must take place simultaneously. There are a few who maintain that either education and social change bear the no link with each other or that education has no role to perform in changing society. If social change refers to fundamental structural changes in society, it is clear that the socio-economic factor and the political factor rather than education have primary importance in the process of social change. Education can facilitate the process of social change as a necessary and a vital collateral factor. It often contributes to igniting, accelerating and sustaining the process of disseminating and cultivating knowledge, information, skills and values appropriate to the changing socio-economic and political structure. Moreover, in a rapidly changing situation, for example, in a post-revolutionary period when fundamental structural changes are taking place rapidly, education can undoubtedly operate as a powerful means to demolish the cultural and educational superstructure and to build its place an altogether new structure appropriate to the situation which would be in harmony with the newborn society. In some countries, a whole new society of education evolved, replacing the old system after revolutionary socio-economic and political structural changes. For example, after the British conquest of India, a system of modern education was introduced under the aegis of British ruler. The reflecting and renovating characteristics of education get enhanced by counterposing an alternative ideology which is in accordance with the emerging social situation. This entails challenging the existing ideology. 
it would be a hyperbole to say that education is the main instrument or the single most important factor of social change. Statements such as these are made for theoretical purposes, sometimes even to confuse the common people, particularly when they are delivered by politicians. Often they reflect that an incorrect understanding of the role of education, an incorrect assumption that a far reaching structural transformation is already taking place and that education therefore should come forward to play the crucial role in consummating the transformation and an essentially social reformist and welfare perspective with no bid for a far reaching structural transformation. Education is expected to play its role in the furtherance of economic growth and social change within the present socio-economic structural framework. The role of education as a factor of social development is defined by the twin facts that education is permeated by the social biases of society and that those who seek education are social actors who retain the orientations of the specific position in a society. It is for these reasons that education is controlled by the dominant groups of society who lay down the priorities in a society. Education is an independent factor in society only to the extent that its organizational forms provide safeguard from direct control from the outside and to some extent that the effect of education cannot be planned or anticipated. In essence, education has a bearing on social concerns, educational change follows social change. More importantly, education conditions developments but is itself a product of prior social and economic changes in society. It is an independent factor in social and economic development generating intended and unintended consequences and conflicts of values and goals. Naturally, the relationship between education and developments are not mutually exclusive. Education can be planned to produce social change. We know, for example, that literacy does stimulate economic and social development. Large-scale literacy programs are important tools in the development of many countries. Yet, education is permeated by the existing social structure which limits the extent of planned change and often produces consequences unintended by the educational planners. Educational innovation is more likely to produce a desired change if innovation in education is coordinated with changing other parts of the social structure. This is to say that effective planning cannot be piecemeal. An illustration of what this implies is given by current attempts to improve elementary education which are carried out by increasing facilities that is the number of teachers and offering financial incentives to families. The intention is to effect a planned change in educational standards which has positive consequences for social and economic development. The planned educational change is usually not coordinated with changing the social context that has depressed educational standards. In most developing countries, there is an enormous unsatisfied demand for education because it is perceived as the gateway to an improved social position. The outcome is a rise in the number of literate people in society for whom few jobs are available. In its turn, the fact that there are few opportunities in many of these societies for occupational and social mobility through education discourages the poor people from obtaining education. Because the poor people have for so long been outside the decision making process in their countries, they do not feel part of the society. They are not likely to value the goals of development that have never brought them benefits. Consequently, parents are not motivated enough to encourage their children to seek basic education or undertake higher studies. Children do not see any real material benefits that education brings. Educational change in such societies cannot proceed effectively without changing other aspects of the social structure. Where education is a condition of social and economic change, it is more likely to produce intended consequences. This happens because educational change follows other changes in society. The social context is thus favorable to social change. 
We must remember that even when the above warnings are considered, the best laid plans of people are likely to go astray. Unintended consequences always emerge because we cannot estimate the precise relationship between the many components of change. The study of unintended consequences is thus an important and continuing part of the sociologist's contribution to understanding and planning social change. This is not to say that unintended consequences essentially challenge social and economic development. The contribution of education to development is dynamic and multifaceted. Partly because they are organized, educational systems are able to secure some of their intended aims even when they come, on, come into conflict with the aims of those who control society. Given the length and complexity of the educational process, it is impossible for outside authorities to exercise a sufficiently detailed control to plug the infusion of undesirable ideas or information. Further, the length of an individual's exposure to education and the centrality of educational qualification for jobs in modern society make education a crucial sector for bringing about planned social change. Also, the unintended consequences and conflicts that arise in the educational processes are important and unplanned source of change in all societies. At the most basic level, they allow a large number of people the time to think and to read with relative freedom from the constraints of job, family or government and ensure a constant critical re-examination of society. Now, we will discuss about education and social change in India. The relationship between education and social change in India can be conceptualized in three stages. The first stage is about the early British period to the end of the 19th century. In this period, the colonial socio-economic and political structure was established in India. However, it also played a kind of liberating role in breaking down traditional norms and values which were in consonance with the older feudal socio-economic politic and were a hindrance to itself. It also sowed the seeds of new norms and values of a bourgeois society and modern nationalism. This liberating influence was internalized and worked in two directions. First, towards a close scrutiny of the indigenous social system and culture leading to powerful movements of social and religious reform and protest movements like Satya Shodak Samaj. Second, towards the process of self-discovery, self-assessment in the context of the new situation leading to the creation of an alternative center of social cohesion, the anti-imperialist movement for national liberation. In the second stage, education assumed a mass character. Occupational and social mobility occurred among segments of population that were hitherto unnoticed. So far, education has spread mainly to the upper caste and urban upper strata in society. Now, it began to percolate to sections lower in the social hierarchy, the middle class and middle strata. This carried the process of nationalism and social awakening still further to the working class in the towns and to the peasantry in the countryside. The process considerably strengthened the movement for national liberation as well as the movement for social change. Meanwhile, the growth of the colonial system of education was developing serious contradictions within itself and vice versa the colonial social economic structure. This provided added edge to the principal contradiction between the British imperialism and the Indian people. This contradiction was reflected in large scale unemployment among the educated on the one hand and the liberating influence in the strength and militancy of the powerful students and youth movement on the other. In the third stage, that is from post-independence periods up to the mid-60s, the process of social and political awakening has taken further strides. Its two aspects, conformity and liberation, are also operating. At the same time, the contradictions within the education system, that is, in relation with the development, socio-economic structure, has also sharpened. 
to sum up the relationship of the education system to social and economic change is extremely complex and it is difficult to derive conclusions that are not misleading. It is the fact that education system is part of the society which is itself changing. Consequently, the real issue is that of the interrelationship between educational institutions and other aspects of the society. Moreover, it is this interrelationship which makes it so difficult to use the educational system to produce conscious or planned social change. The education system cannot be seen in isolation from its social context. The realization that education reform is not a universal solution should not, however, lead us to minimize the importance of knowledge about the educational institutions in society. This simply means that the relationship between education and social change is very complex and no simple generalization can be drawn regarding them.